we've got a couple of, uh, I, I, I hesitate to use the word nuts, but football nuts uh, here. <laughs> well, one, because one of them's our MLA. i got to hey, be careful with the it. wording here. Uh, so we have MLA Kelvin Gerson and uh, also uh, one of our uh, Eastman Raiders refs, uh, Trev Esau. Welcome. Thank you. And you know what? It's uh, it's exciting to have you guys both in here because I know you're both passionate about football. You're passionate about Olymp- uh, about uh, politics. And but what I want to know is the question that's on Facebook right now: NFL or CFL, and why? Uh, Kelvin. Well, for me, um, being at a CFL game live, I think is better. I prefer to go to the CFL live. Uh, but I like watching the NFL better on TV. I think their product shows up better on TV. It's a higher production. And so I like watching the NFL on TV more. I like going to the games at the CFL level more. And you go to some Vikings games, too. You yeah, cross I go the line to, there a few times. Oh, I go to both. I mean, don't get me wrong. I enjoy going <laughs> to the Vikings games. But you're, you've had to choose between the two. Then that would be my choice. But sure, it's a, it's a real event. I mean, the NFL, when you go down to a game, it is an event. And it's sort of a full-day event. Uh, and so there's a lot of experience involved with it as well. But so is the CFL, and particularly in Winnipeg. I mean, despite what the Bombers are going through. We'll, we'll get the, to the, the Bombers. The, but the fan base has been there. I mean, yeah. the fan base has been there yeah. through thick and thin, uh, and more th- more th- thin than uh, thick. But uh, it's a good kind experience like with hair. the Bombers. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> the cheap shots are starting already. Uh, Trev Esau, NFL, yeah. CFL. I'm a CFL guy. I'm pure-blooded Canadian and proud to be Canadian in a Canadian game. But, uh, you know what? I've, I used to think that you could only pick one or the other. So kind of like uh, marriage, you had to, only, had to be monogamous. Yes. Well, I've decided that I can be polygamous in oh. this marriage of football, and I can enjoy both games. <laughs> wow. I didn't think we'd drag marriage into this, but when you talk football. Yeah, well, uh, you are married to the sport. So, true, so true. At least that's what my wife Are says. you divorcing the Barmans yet? Oh, boy, we're in You're trial close. separation, maybe. <laughs> oh, okay, you know what? A lot of people talking about Joe Mack and, and going like, okay, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do with Joe Mack, and should we wait to the end of the season? What do you think? Ay, ay, ay. What should we do with Joe Mack? I... I was earlier in the season on the side of he need to keep him. He's brought in a lot of good players. Oh. However, I am slowly falling off that bandwagon. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know what to do with Joe Mack. And I, 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 I Kelvin answer because I don't know what to say right Joe now. Joe Mack's got to go. I don't think he's got to go right now. Uh, you know, not a lot of player transactions happen during the season in mm-hmm. the CFL. They almost all happen in the off season. So. Uh, moving the Gmail now, while it might feel good, it might be sort of this vindictive sort of thing to do, and you get this rush out of doing it because you're looking for somebody to blame. Yep. Uh, I think it has to happen at the end of the season. There'll be more of a wholesale change in as well, not just Joe Mack. Joe Mack's not the only issue, but he is certainly a issue, and I think he's going to have to go. We'll talk more with uh, Kelvin Gertz and Trev Esau after Jarvis Church, Lover's Kiss on Mix. And we're talking bombers and what we need to do to fix this. I know uh, uh, Kelvin already, uh, you know, raised some uh, uh, Joe Mac supporters' uh, dander by saying uh, "fire Joe Mac," but uh, a lot of people are on your side with that. Uh, but well, where are those Joe Mac supporters? You know, call them out. I'd like to hear from them. Yeah. Call three four six zero 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 or on your MTS mobility phone, toll free pound ninety six seven. Especially if you are Joe Mac, because that'll oh, be cool. Well, Get him to call in. Something, eh? Absolutely, yeah. uh, Clint Kent. Your you know, thoughts on that? I, you know, I was I was disappointed they cut Clint Kent during uh, training camp after the training camp. It's not that he's the greatest player in the world, but it's it's symbolic. He was a veteran. He was a, a defensive captain. He was well liked in the room, and they cut him. I think for monetary reasons. Uh, and uh, now they're struggling because they don't have enough veterans. The coach said yesterday, "Well, we're struggling because you know we don't have enough veteran leadership." Well, you cut the veteran leadership. Whether it was this coach or the previous coach or the GM or the board of directors or I don't know who else is in charge. But I mean, you know, you can't be cutting these veterans before the season and then complain during the season that you don't have enough veteran leadership. So are they I, making rash decisions? What do yeah, you think? I, I just want to know who cut him. Because uh, in my understanding, the GM is the guy who brings in this pool of players and the coach is the one who, who chooses who's on the team. Yeah. So was it Paul LaPolice that cut this guy? Because then Paul LaPolice need to be fired. But Joe Max, or uh, I'm sorry, Tim Burke's comments yesterday was, was a team decision. Well, so there's there nobody taking ownership of this thing. If it was Joe Paul, Paul LaPolice's decision, throw him under the bus. He's already under the bus, driven over a few times. <laughs> may as well, may as well just keep him. It's a big bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's still rolling. Yeah. Keep it going. going. So you think it's a matter of the owners kind of trying to t- do the coach's job? It's somebody, say, something's going wrong with the leadership in that team. Something's, and, and that's evident throughout. And cutting leadership, uh, cutting veterans, that's, it's, something's going really wrong there. And really Trevor's point, I mean, it goes to the structure of this team. I mean, who is in charge? You've got a president of the board. You've got a board. You've got a GM. You've got a coach. And you've got a football team that owes $80 million on a stadium that, that they might get into next year. No CFL team is going to pay off $80 million. Never. You know, I mean, we, we might have a you know, good two or three years in the new stadium. But to, to saddle a community-owned CFL team with an 
eighty million dollar debt because you had a, a, a government fiasco. And I'll make a political statement here: transition from Clint Ken to, to Greg Selinger. But I mean, you cannot saddle a CFO team with an eighty million dollar debt and expect that they're going to be successful on the field and, and maybe even off the field for uh, for twenty years. And so it's ridiculous. Do you think the pressure of that debt is going to? is going to force them to make more rash decisions? Oh, I mean, you can see what it's making rash decisions off the field when they go through policies of, you know, you can't bring in a bottle of water, you can't bring in a chocolate bar because they want to sell the chocolate bar to concession stands. At that's driv- that's driven That's driven by revenue. Piece, yeah. That's driven by revenue. So if they're making those decisions based on chocolate bars, I, I can't help but believe they're not making those decisions based on football players. We'll talk more with Kelvin Gertson and Trav Esau in just a moment. Uh, Buck Pierce going to be back in action on Friday. Will Buck Pierce be the knight in shining armor? Is no. this going to save the day, Trev? He will not save the save the day. He is not proven to be a good quarterback. Um, he'll carry the team on his shoulders, but the over under is that he'll be twenty three minutes before he's out with another injury. Kelvin, uh, I love Buck Pierce. I think they're going to win on on Friday because of Buck Pierce. The problem is that your quarterback has to be on the field to make a difference, and he can't yes. stay on the field consistently enough. Um, so he's not the long term solution. He's probably not even the short term solution. I might give him more than twenty three yeah. minutes, uh, but uh, <laughs> oh, it's not the long. It's not the long term solution. <laughs> so uh, can the season be saved? What no, are you thinking? I don't think it can be. I think it's too late. I mean, yeah, true. Hamilton and Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, however you say that word. Uh, <laughs> so are we don't talk yeah. about it. They're uh, they're terrible, and uh, yeah. They're Theoretically, the Bombers could catch him, but they won't. The Bombers are just too far gone, I think. Can the season be saved, Calvin? Well, and save it for what? So, I mean, we, if we pick up a couple more wins and we get into the playoffs <laughs> and we lose in the first round, I mean, it's, it's a longer-term rebuild. We have to start looking towards the future. Thank you, gentlemen.